Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Podcast Brunch Club podcast. I'm Adela, and I'm the founder of PBC. Today, we're going to do a quick roundup discussion about the December listening list called Talking About My Generation, and you can find the playlist at podcastbrunchclub.com slash generations. Now, for any new listeners, PBC is like book club, but for podcasts. We have over 70 chapters on six continents that meet up. Lately, it's been virtually, but usually they'll meet up in person and they'll discuss the monthly podcast listening list. So the this podcast is an extension of those conversations, and you can join one of the local chapters or our global virtual chapter by going to podcastbrunchclub.com. And as usual, I'm joined by Sarah, chapter leader of our Houston chapter and founder of Audible Feast. Hey there, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Hi, Adela. This month, we listened to four episodes. There was an episode from Today Explained about the OK Boomer phenomenon, an episode about a woman who pursued a career that her parents were not a fan of from the show How to Talk to Mommy and Poppy About Anything, an episode from WNYC's Nancy called Taiwan, where host Kathy Tu discusses how different generations in Taiwan view queerness, and finally, an episode with multiple stories from multi-story about what they perceive to be different between generations. Yeah, I'm... Um... I'm excited that we got to feature multi-story because I don't know if you know this, Sarah, but one of our chapter leaders is actually the host of that show. So I know. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Becca Breyers. She is the host of our East Midlands chapter in the UK. Uh, she's the host of this story of this show. I've listened to it for a long time. And when we were pulling together uh, episodes for for this playlist, um, you know, it was on the shortlist and got on you know made it onto the playlist so i'm excited that we got to feature her stuff i liked i think it was that episode where there was a man he was saying like i'm just two years older than my partner and you know we're quote unquote from different generations and i'm like hell no we're not like <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know two, there's just no two years apart. yeah it's so funny you know i'm in the what are i think they call us uh what do they call us like Zennials or something like I'm in the in between uh, sandwich generation. I'm a 1980 baby, and so, um, and you know, you and I, I was, <laughs> I was listening to our roundup from last month, and I was hearing us talk about millennials as we often do on this podcast. Um, and we always say we love you, but we are not you. Um, <laughs> you and I yeah. are not. <laughs> We're not but, millennials. No, but then like, but there are so many things that like especially maybe maybe because I'm in this sandwich generation thing. Um, like there's certainly many ways that I am very millennial and there's so many ways I'm Gen X-ish, you know, like mm -hmm. so many, like it's it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think they talked a little bit about, I mean, I, I liked that the whole playlist was set up by the Today Explained episode. It sort of sort of set the scene and then it sort of launched into these more story-based conversations um, and, you know, story stories and conversations mm -hmm. between generations. Um, but on the Today Explained episode, they talked about generational amnesia, which I thought was a really interesting idea of, you know, there's this like collective memory loss of what kids used to be like, you know, <laughs> you know, we when we're in our 40s, we're like, kids these days, you know, we were never like that. But we forget that we kind of were like that. <laughs> and you know, and there's this amnesia that happens that, you know, I think they also talked about it. They use the term presentism. Mm. And I wrote that down. It says using our present to fill in the gaps, of what we don't remember. Hmm. So I don't know. I think that we can often be harder on younger generations because we forgot what it was like to be young. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, you know, I, I didn't. I didn't even know about the OK Boomer thing. So I thought that was oh, really? great. No, like, I mean, I guess I had heard it like here or there or maybe like on Saturday Night Live or something. Like, uh -huh. I don't know, <laughs> like probably people making fun of say people saying OK Boomer. I don't know. But um, no, I, I kind of missed that moment in pop culture time, I think. And I don't think people say it anymore. So um, <laughs> I very quick. I sort of like, I guess I just didn't even pay attention to it. So like, 
So first of all, I was not a person that would be saying that, and I'm not a person somebody would be saying that to either. So right. um, I don't know. So I thought actually the just the simple history of like this is how this started and and this is – how it kind of picked up and took off. I thought it was interesting. And I, I also, since that episode was from a year ago, um, it was kind of a funny, like, look back in time, like a snapshot of like, mm-hmm. oh, this is really popular right now. You know, it was, it was, mm-hmm. just, it was just kind of fun. How everything's such a big deal in the moment. And then yeah. we very quickly forget about it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it's just, it's interesting to me also, as we thought, think about, you know, blame like blame across generations, you know, a lot of part of the OK Boomer meme was about young, you know, generation millennials and Gen Gen Zers sort of blaming boomers for like the shit show that is what we're living through right now. And, you know, not necessarily the pandemic, but but the environment and and this Mm -hmm. and that. Right. And then also on the flip side, a lot of older generations blame the younger generations for like the breakdown in the, in society and the breakdown of values and all of these things. And there's a lot of finger pointing. And at the same time, like generations are so arbitrarily like, Oh, designated. Yeah. I mean, who, who decides that the cutoff for one generation is 1981 or whatever? Yeah. And I think, I think, uh, I think maybe with some of the newer ones, maybe it's like, you know, how they say, uh, what is it? Z is they've always grown up with the internet um, yeah. or, you know, it, it's just always right. been there. It's a, it's like a totally a part of your life, including even like school, you know, school is on the internet or, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. um, there's, it's, if you're at, even if you're at school, there's like an internet component. So uh, I, I guess, I don't know. I I think it's also weird that they define a generation like while it's happening. Like how do you mm. like how can you say what the end right. is and like it's because it's based on I don't like know. cultural phenomena, right? Like yeah. you're saying that like it's only really definable when you look back on it and right. as like a piece of history that yeah. we can look back and say, well, like yeah, the internet really defined this generation, but yeah. Yeah. So, well, I think we use generations as like an excuse to like say we just dislike something about a group of people. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. and, and like, when do you hear like respectful things talked about mm-hmm. when you talk about a generation? Like, oh, maybe the silent generation, sure. But like anything beyond that, there's, com- it's yeah. always coupled with complaints of, yeah. oh, Oh, Gen Xers are like so like moody and depressed and like, you know, (laughs) whatever. Okay. I mean, it is ageism, right? Like essentially if if you boil it all down, right, it becomes ageism and it becomes um, just stereotypes, you know, just like a whole a whole catalog of stereotypes for, you know, between and among the generations that are not ever true. We know we know that stereotypes are just not accurate yeah so i want to talk a little bit about the nancy episode um because nancy uh you know was was canceled by a wnyc Mm -hmm. earlier this year and i know it had a huge fan base um and so there was a lot of vocal opposition to that uh and when nancy came out uh, in the beginning I was not a fan and um it's it's it seemed like it would be something so up my alley like I I really gravitate toward that type of storytelling um and I think the disconnect for me was sort of a generational thing like I felt mm-hmm. like I'm not the target audience for this and I'm having a hard time like um like I don't know getting into the storytelling style or maybe I don't know I just felt like everything was too cool for me and Mm -hmm. so I stopped listening to it after a while so I was curious to see whether I would like this episode that I that was on the playlist and I loved it um yeah I just I thought that uh, I you know going back to what you said at the beginning of our recording I really appreciate that this playlist had conversations in it about mm-hmm. generations. So it was truly talking about my generation. You yeah. know, it wasn't like yeah. it wasn't just like here's about generations. It was like 
okay, like, like how does that influence how we communicate? Oh, it was just, I just really thought it was really, really well done. It wasn't, it was a, a great length. It was like, it just hit on a, like some emotional notes, but not mm-hmm. too over the top. Like, oh, we're trying to make you sob. Um, and it was really real. Like I can picture myself in that situation, having that conversation. Like, I don't know. It's just, uh, and, you know, as I said at the top, it was about the host, Kathy, too, talking to her mom about queerness in Taiwan and what, what it would be like if she had lived in Taiwan um, for her whole life. Uh, it, mm-hmm. it was just, I don't know. What did you think of that episode? Yeah, I really, I really liked it. So I was, I thought it was a really, again, so total props to Joe who curated this playlist for us. Um, He did a real, like he specifically wanted it to be about the conversations happening between generations. So, and he, and I think he did a really good job of selecting the right episodes. So um, I thought that the Taiwan episode was really good because also it talked about um not just difference in generation but difference in culture mm-hmm. right so she grew up in the united states and um so there's obviously that level of kind of um struggle with her parents and similar i think to the how to talk to mommy and poppy is the same sort of situation where it's like a generational and a cultural thing Um, I think the thing that really moved me the most was this, I'm going to play a clip. Um, it's pretty short from Nancy. I actually grabbed it. Um, so let's just listen and then we could talk about it. So so my parents choose to accept rather than put me out. Yeah. I asked Nangua if her mom reacts the same way to her hair as my mom does to mine. If you say we're gay inside that's okay. Uh-huh. But when we're very, very gay <gasps> outside, yes. they feel pressure. They say, what is that about? so everybody would know that you're a lesbian yeah. and maybe everybody would know that I'm a parent of lesbian. You know? <laughs> so that's yeah. their pressure. They feel there's other people's view everywhere. I have this feeling that uh, actually parents are from different world from with kids so we have to accept that parents has their limitations too Mm. like I cannot change change my shape for my parents but they can maybe they cannot change their shape for me too so that clip you know was from when she was talking to a Taiwanese uh queer person who she sort of saw as her almost like her doppelganger in in Taiwan like this is who I probably would have been um so she wanted to talk to her about her experience of being queer in in Taiwan and i think what really kind of hit home with me was that last little bit where she was talking about how you know as children we expect our parents to just like love us unconditionally and love us for who we are and we would never change who we are for our parents but then we don't sometimes afford the same uh, grace to our parents when, you know, when they might ha- struggle with that very thing. You know what I mean? And it just seemed like such a graceful thing that she said. And it really hit home with me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think I've thought about this a lot as I've gotten older. And then also when I had kids, it made me think about this a lot. You know, like, I don't know how many times I've thought about the co- the the idea that like every no parent is trying to do a bad job like every mm-hmm. parent is doing in the moment what they think is the right thing to do like no one strives to be a bad parent and right. sometimes you don't have the skills or the tools to do the thing that's best for the for the kid and and it is what it is like it's yeah. just but like acknowledging that and like I guess probably mostly for me, it's just been being in that situation myself and not having the tools or the skills to deal with X, Y, Z that's happening with a kid or even situationally. Like right now, I need to go and take a four day road trip because I can't do this right now or, you know, whatever, Mm -hmm. like acknowledging that if I'm in this place, 
my parent had to have been in this place as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Just, I guess I'm just saying the older I get, the more grace I feel towards my own parents. And um, yeah, especially with something like something like coming out to a parent, you know, you don't know what they have in their toolkit to be able to, Mm -hmm. to handle um, something like that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of the, how to talk to mommy and poppy episode and how that sort of always in also again with culture and generation, something that struck me was that, um, that she said something along the lines of people who feel rejected or weird growing up often have, she has this sort of theory that people who feel rejected or weird growing up, um, often have more creativity. And I thought that was like a really interesting, I mean, she's, she qualified it with like, I have literally no evidence of this. (laughs) I have not done a study on it. Like it's just her theory, her, her working theory. And I can, I can see how that could be the case. Like if you kind of constantly have to think sort of in two cultures or in two worlds, right. The, the sort of American world and the, and the, and this is, you know, I'm talking about specifically about culture, but she was talking about being, you know, quote unquote, weird, right? Because she Mm -hmm. wrote this book called Weird. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually included the book, a link to the book on the playlist page. So if you want to go and find that, it's uh, podcastbrunchclub.com slash generations. But um, but I just, it just struck me as something that was like an interesting theory. You know, I mean, they already say that people, kids who grow up with two languages are oftentimes two things more creative but also more logical Mm -hmm. because they have to create these constructs in their heads for two different languages that are have their own logic to them Mm -hmm. and so you become able to sort of like flip between two set of rule sets of rules but they are logical rules but they're very different yeah and the other thing about that episode that i thought was really interesting that um that she said was that her parents were projecting their own fears onto her. And I feel like that is just so true of like every parent. Yes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. Like I, I anything, attest to that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, any struggles you had growing up, you don't want your parent, your children to experience that. And that might be the focus of the way that you raise them, you mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. And maybe other things sort of fall by the wayside because you're so singularly focused on this one thing to protect, you know, whether that, you know, I, I don't know, for my parents, maybe it was like, my dad got laid off a bunch of times and they just wanted me to have like, a stable job. And so they really, really hammered home that this idea of, and we talked about this last month with the working playlist, they hammered home that, you know, you have a job and you're grateful you have a job and you don't rock the boat. And, you know, and as a result, I've been in the workforce for 23 years and I've had three whole jobs, like three jobs with no gaps in between, you know, like I had, didn't, I was never unemployed, anything that I had a job waiting for me lined up, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but then again, like it makes me not as, you know, big of a risk taper and there are things that I wish I could do. And, you know, they're all, it's a balancing act. And to really tie it all out at the end of that episode, I liked that there was a, uh, a quick, you know, little uh, conversation with a career coach, um, an interview with Juleka Lantigua Williams and, It was about, you know, how can you have these conversations with your parents? So totally tied into the Mm -hmm. whole theme of the podcast uh, list. And um, I don't know. I just I like that about that show. Like it provides some practical, you know, it is right. It's called How to Talk to Mommy and Poppy About Anything. And so here's how you actually do it. Not just it's (laughs) difficult, but (laughs) here's some tips about how to do it. So, um, yeah, I thought that was good. Yeah. And we have Juleka as a guest on an upcoming or I don't know if it's going to come out before this episode or after. So I apologize. But she is going to be a guest on the on the podcast. And I I, I already recorded it. I talked to her about the show about what she's done. She's like a absolute powerhouse. Seriously, this lady is like a rock star. Um, and I will also be having a conversation with Becca from Multistory about her podcast as well. But yeah, she has some really interesting takes on it. And she set that podcast up 
in that way on purpose, where it's like partially a very much she cut herself out of like Juleka herself cut herself out of the story from the guest. And then she sort of wrapped it all up by inviting a an expert onto the show to sort of listen and reflect. And actually, I was a guest on that show. So I one of the oh, I know episodes. <laughs> yeah, I was a guest on that show. I talked about my struggles with my dad um, and his political leanings. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, it's a great show. But let's um let's just take a listen to some audio clips from our community members. So we grabbed these with permission from the conversation at one of the virtual chapter meetings. And as always, if you want to join us at one of the PVC meetings, just go to podcastbrunchclub.com. The virtual chapter link is podcastbrunchclub.com slash virtual dash chapter. Hi. Hi, I'm Laura. I'm from the, the Vancouver chapter. And uh, I my main takeaways from this playlist was that was the empathy um, topic. I think that it's uh, if I, if we had more empathy for these different generations and understanding truly what they lived through, I mean, living through a war, living through oppression, living through all sorts of different things would allow us to maybe get along a little bit more. Um, I watched a documentary called The Social Dilemma on Netflix, and mm-hmm. one of my key takeaways was that a we're now living with generations that have not lived without the internet. They don't know what that that is like. And I'm one of the last generations to have gone through high school with no internet and well, no smartphone, I should say. Uh, So I think empathy plays a huge role with having uh, to understand other generations and what they've been through and maybe stop dismissing them for a certain, you know, maybe a, a certain quirkiness that they have to um, we'd be better able to understand exactly why they think how they think, um, yeah. having known about their lived experience. So that was my key takeaway. Hey, good morning, um, Brenda. I'm here in Vancouver. Um, I really enjoyed that one. I think it was the one, uh, gen, um, Generations, the one, I think it was BBC. Yeah, I found that uh, multi-story. I found that quite compelling. I think that was the one with the little kids asking the asking oh god it was so dear yeah, the little precious cute. little voices it was so cute um and then yeah the one nancy the nancy uh episode about taiwan i found interesting um but definitely less about generations than about other things about mm-hmm. immigration experience about sexual orientation yes. and gender identity and all that kind of thing so it felt it was interesting and i really enjoyed about hearing about the evolution of the situation for LGBTQ folk in Taiwan, you know, super interesting to hear about that. Um, but it, for me, it just didn't fit in ge- mm, to the yeah. overall theme of generations. Um, yeah. And then I just want to say that as a person of the Generation X group, I'm very confident um, in the millennials and the Gen Z, is it, who's up upcoming <laughs> yeah. next? I'm very yeah. confident um, in them. And it's also fun being a Gen X person. And th- I don't think this got explored very much in this playlist, but um, those of us who are in Gen X know that we're the ones that get like, there's like this whole like boomer millennium, millennial war. <laughs> And the Gen X just like fly through under the radar, ignored as always. <laughs> yeah. The middle child, literally the middle child uh, of the generation. So it always makes me laugh that nobody's got a nobody's got a problem with us. I'm sure they will eventually have a problem with us when we're old. I'm in, also in Generation X, but when we're like d- definitely old, we're not middle aged. I think that's when the problems will arise. <laughs> <laughs> it could be that's when our time will come. <laughs> One of my takeaways from this list was. Um, the big cultural themes to go along with the generational themes. I feel like uh, that really resonated with uh, the idea of talking to parents that um, are older, but also come from a different culture. And so the differences may be even more uh, um, spread apart. Um, uh, Also, I would say one of the things I got from this was a sense of empathy for like I guess as I'm as I'm getting older and I'm not the young kid anymore, uh, I feel like I understand how the young how some aspects of the world are changing and I'm not part of it. I just so appreciate um, 
my relationships with other generations and partly my work, I come in contact with a lot of people from uh, different generations. And um, one of my mentors and best friend, he always really made sure that his life was full of people, friendships with people in all different generations. And I think that is such a great idea because um and it's not just sort of like he's mentoring young people he was always like like these people are my friends and I learn from them and I always think oh it's but it's not always that easy to do because you don't always come in contact with people of different generations so I just really appreciate um thinking about it and sort of being more intentional about having deep relationships with people from different generations. So real quick, I just want to take a second to talk to anyone out there who's even thinking about starting a podcast. I use Podbean as my podcast host, and they have been fantastic. They have amazing technical support and lots of different options for hosting, including a free plan. The one I use is only $9 a month and has unlimited storage. They also have an ad marketplace that any Podbean show can join, and it helps you find advertisers for your show. To get a free month of hosting, go to podbean.com slash PBC. But even if you don't host your show on Podbean, but you want to use their ad marketplace to place ads in other people's shows, you can sign up at sponsorship.podbean.com slash PBC to get a $100 credit toward podcast advertising. Okay, so now we're going to diverge and talk about our latest podcast finds. Sarah, what do you want to share with us this month? I have two podcast recommendations this month. One is um, light and one is not. And (laughs) the one that is not is The Anxious Achiever. And that is from the Harvard Business Review. Uh, I think I found this show from listening to other HBR podcasts. There's one called uh, Women at Work that I also really like. Mm -hmm. The Anxious Achiever is about how to achieve things professionally or otherwise while having anxiety, being an anxious person, um, which, you know, I I have it in spikes. I would say I'm more of a, like I get really anxious about certain topics. I don't really have like a general anxiety, but I think a lot of people could benefit from this podcast because it's not just about work. It's just about functioning. (laughs) Um, And there were a couple of really great episodes. Um, The two that I would recommend that are recent are an interview with John Moe, who had the hilarious World of Depression, which was canceled. Mm. And the episode is like, hey, how are you coping with your show being canceled? And, you know, how are you doing now? And it was really, really great. And then there was one about Um, anxiety, depression, and being a working mom in the pandemic. So, you know, just a fun trifecta of (laughs) pandemic, anxiety, depression. (laughs) But, uh, you know, again, it's uh, similar how how we were talking about how to talk to mommy and poppy. It it gives like tips, like here's what you can do, you know? And Mm -hmm. so to me, that's not depressing. That's like hopeful. And that's like Practical. Okay, here's like a, yeah, so I really like that one. And the, it's pretty bite size. It's maybe 30 minutes episodes. So that's a, a length I really like. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on the lighter side, uh, <laughs> there's a, a show called 2020. Uh, it's It has a, if you can't find it right away, you actually type the words in 2020, uh, a pop culture podcast. And it's about the year 2000. So that's totally my jam. As I already told you earlier, I'm an 80s baby, <laughs> an 80 baby. Um, so that is totally my my era, right? I was 20. Um, so <laughs> my favorite episode that they had was about the great and amazing Craig David. Do you remember him? No. Oh, gosh. Oh, you, well, you'll probably remember the songs if you go back, but he had a maybe one or two hits. <laughs> and okay. he was supposed to be this like, you know, hot thing from the UK and, you know, like the the mm. next like solo artist, like, but he had a very boy bandish sound. And I don't, it was a, uh, maybe I'll get crucified for saying he sounded like a boy band. But um, anyway, it was like, they, I mean, they sort of like mock the stuff from year 2000, but it's also okay. like, very enjoyable like they talk a lot there's a lot of britney spears discussion you know it's it's good stuff so it's a limited series i don't know that they're gonna do another anymore it was just like a set of episodes and i heard about about it from the guardian um 
that's a that's a podcast uh, source that I enjoy a lot is getting yeah. stuff from the guardian because they will pull things that are totally random and independent and it's not cool. always stuff from the uk um anyway i uh i enjoy the guardians recommendations quite a bit so cool. what are you what have you been into lately so i'm gonna actually recommend three which is not usually what i do but i'm <laughs> I, I wasn't gonna recommend this one but because i already recommended it i'm pretty sure in the past but because of this particular playlist theme i really want to call it out again and it's on the bonus list it's a series called we share the same sky and it's it's a series of about seven episodes and it's seriously the most beautiful story i've heard i think ever honestly ever um it's about a woman young woman who walks in the footsteps of her grandmother who escaped the nazis um and had sort of a whole series of things happen to her. And it's this really, I don't know, it's just a beautiful portrait of her grandmother's life, but also her own life, because it's woven in with sort of the experiences that she had as she traveled and went to the different places and met the different families that helped her, her grandmother escape. And um, it's just really... I loved it. Sarah, you listened, right? I, I yeah. recommend. I was like, you have to listen to this. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I listened to the first couple or something like that. And then I got distracted and listened to something else. But yes. Yeah, I loved it. So um, the other two are one is called I'm Not a Monster. It's from the BBC and PBS Frontline. And it's about an American family, a husband and a wife and their three kids who traveled to fight with ISIS. It's investigative journalism. It's really interesting. It's I actually have only listened to three episodes because it's in the middle of the run. So they I think they're releasing weekly. It's very, very new. Um, and it's it's really well done. So it sort of starts with a call between the reporter and the wife who is in prison in the United States and has maintained her innocence saying that she wasn't it wasn't a choice she was taken there with her she's a woman from Indiana and 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 it goes into this whole thing where she has recordings um videos and in fact the little boy her her son who's actually um a child of hers from a previous marriage um did a he did like a a video threatening President Trump. It was like an ISIS video, and and her son was on it, and it, and it just like exploded all over the news, and everybody wanted to find out who it was. And um, there's videos of him explaining to his stepdad how he's gonna like lure American troops toward him and then detonate a, a suicide vest. Like it's really intense. Whoa! And this kid is you know, an American kid, you know, he's 10 years old, he grew up in the United States, he's, you know, it's just really, intense. I don't know, intense, intense yeah. is the right word. Yeah. I'll so have to check that out. Yeah, it's good. Um, the other one is called Passport. And we checked in a little bit before that we started recording, Sarah. So I know that you also have listened. Yes. So I'm going to rely on you to help me kind of explain it because <laughs> it's not easy to explain. It's like a kind of a travel podcast, but it's not really. It's stories and it's interviews, but it's like digging deep into one sort of piece of a country like I think they did a whole thing on train travel in India you know yeah. and so they talked about and and they even like went even deeper than that about like love stories on trains in India and and then they have episodes that are called mis misinformation and where they sort of debunk the myths about different cultures cultures and countries and sometimes it's not even debunking it maybe it's even like verifying it <laughs> right so yeah. I really, I really like it. Is that, is that yeah, an no, accurate description? Yeah, I think, I think it, I, I hope the intent, at least what I get out of it, it gives me a strong sense of place. It's just like, it tells you, yes, you're right. Like in that India episode, I listened to that one too. And, you know, getting that specific saying like love on trains in India is it's, yes, it's very like hyper specific, but you can kind of see they do a good job of building out around it to help mm -hmm. you see 
okay, well, this is the culture. This is the environment. This is the the landscape, the physical landscape that like makes this happen or, or mm-hmm. you know, that influences this. So anyway, I, I think it gives you this sense of place through some kind of very specific story. So yes, it's not exactly storytelling, but there's a component of that. There's a component of being interested in travel of like, what's, what's it like there? Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it's really unique. It's a good one. Good yeah. recommendation. Yeah. And I, and I'm going to shout out the way I found out about it too, which is actually another podcast. It's called Pod Spotter. It's a podcast about podcasts. And it's meta um, like us. Very, very meta like our, <laughs> us. Yes. Uh, and he, he interviews different podcast hosts and, and he, he definitely, um, it's not just always the mainstream, you know, uh, it's a little bit more indie, at least mm-hmm. so far. I don't know if he's going to get into mainstream. I don't know. I mean, he he interviewed the guy who, uh, oh gosh, I forgot his name, but um, the one who did Dead Eyes, mm-hmm. which I I think I've recommended in the past. Yeah, which is, yeah, I mean, it's a, I love that that podcast. He's he's done ones with people who, um, you know, have audio fiction podcasts and stuff like that. So, um, it's it's a nice way to to uh, find new podcasts. So, a shout out to Pod Spotter. And now we'd like to share a few podcast recommendations from the PPC community. Since I have a wider audience, I will proselytize on my favorite Chicago local um, podcast, which is Nerdette. Um, They've done amazing introverts guide to like surviving the pandemic, which has been helpful for me, who has been as an extrovert, it's been very challenging. Um, and they actually, in October, did an interview with the author of the millennial burnout generation. So it kind of could, that um, that interview could be a good tie into this playlist if you are um, interested in checking out a new podcast, but want a good entry point into something we've been discussing today. I happened to listen to this one a, a while ago, but it's the Tim Ferriss show. And it's the one where he interviews Hugh Jackman. It's episode 444. And it is, it's about an hour and a half, but they cover so much. And I was really blown away by Hugh Jackman, just in how, uh, how he lives his life and the failures and overcoming he had, not just in his uh, acting career, but also in his personal life. And they do cover so many topics, mostly, mostly regarding health. Uh, But he's just such a well-rounded individual. And I was uh, if I didn't know he, if I didn't know he was an actor, I'd be like, oh, he's some sort of health professional. But um, <laughs> I just, it was one of those ones, one of those podcasts where you really want a notepad nearby because the the facts just come, the information just comes so quickly at you. But he's just really so wonderful to listen to, and uh, I really like him as an actor. So yeah, caught my attention. I recently um, discovered a new series um, called Going for Broke, which um, the first episode was on Netscape, if anyone can remember Netscape Navigator way back when, and how they were one of the first IPOs in Silicon Valley. And I guess future episodes, they're going to look at companies that were the hot, hot, hot thing and that everybody invested in and that we don't even have them around anymore or they're a shell of what they used to be. And that's kind of an interesting series to follow. It kind of the build up to the the boom and then the bust. I just want to let everybody know that if you have thoughts or podcast recommendations that you'd like to share, you can always send us an audio clip to podcast at podcastbrunchclub.com. We love, love, love featuring your voices on this podcast. This is not about Sarah and I. This is about you guys. So we want to feature your voices. So send us audio clips. And before we wrap up, you know, we're also always looking for people to help curate playlists. Um, If you're interested, please reach out to us for some guidelines. We're happy to help with the process. We'll be sending out the January playlist on January 1st via email, and we'll also post it on the PBC website. You can find more ways to connect at podcastbrunchclub.com. Happy listening. Thank you for listening and being a part of the Podcast Brunch Club community. Do you have any thoughts on our discussion this month? Send a message or voice memo to podcast at podcastbrunchclub.com. 
PBC is a passion project, and we rely on support from our global community to continue bringing people together in person and online. So if you feel like PBC has contributed to your life in any way, please consider becoming a patron or making a one-time donation. Go to podcastbrunchclub.com slash support for more information. If you're interested in becoming an organizational partner, go to podcastbrunchclub.com slash sponsors. A quick thanks to our early partners, Podbean. For one free month of podcast hosting, go to podbean.com slash PBC. Podchaser, the IMDB of podcasts. Listen Notes, a podcast search engine. Critical Frequency, the podcast network for everyone else. The Venn Media, a weekly newsletter for curious minds. And Lentigua Williams and Company, podcast network, telling stories in the seams of society. Finally, some credits for this episode. Katie D. Fiore is our audio editor. Music is from Chad Crouch and Miss Ayal Ghana, downloaded from Free Music Archive. I'm Adela, founder of Podcast Brunch Club. And as always, thanks and happy listening. <laughs>